Here we have an LG 5K monitor that was dropped in locally and the customer said a Thunderbolt connector issue. What's new with LG monitors? Every single one of them, same issue, except for maybe 10% of them where we replaced the connector and still the board would not work. Now the customer said he bought the part and he wanted to try this himself, but he said, I think it's more than what I can handle. I did some research and I found your videos. And since I've been following and watching your videos, they pop in his feed. I told them that this is not something can be done by just watching a video or two. It takes a lot of practice. It takes the right tools and practice is the mother of all skills, but you cannot expect to watch few videos and then replace a Thunderbolt connector on a board. Impossible. Now, looking at the board, it looks like the customer already attempted the repair. I was under the impression that nothing was done and he's not going to work on it. But look at this. I do not think the customer was able to remove the connector. This looks like the original connector. Maybe he applied flux and heat and was not able to remove it and he just knew his limitations. We see flux everywhere. I do not know what type of flux the customer is using, but what can you do? We need to clean whatever we see here. The good thing is we do not have any of those components missing. It's very easy to knock a component off. I mean, even with cleaning, even if you want to clean with a swab, a cotton swab, and one of the fibers gets stuck in one of those components, you can easily rip a component off. So this is a very delicate board. And LG, they only have one connector as the main input. This one gets damaged, the whole monitor will not work no more. And this connector is SMD, it's surface mount, but you do have through hole legs, one, two, three, four. The Thunderbolt cable is big and thick, so it's easy to damage this connector if that cable moved. And that's a common issue with those connectors. I have countless number of videos working on LG monitors, and some of them have ripped pads under the connector, and some of them are a nightmare to work on. Some of them we even refuse. We do not work on because of the impracticality of working on such a board with a lot of damage. Now what we're going to do is not apply hot air from the front here. We do not want to knock any of those components out and we do not want to burn any of those connectors. So what we're going to do is heat up from the back. That's the safest way to go at it. And the connector is right here. Okay. We also have to be careful. We have a lot of components here and we have this fan connector right there. We're going to end up burning that connector. So what we need to do is desolder this connector, put it on the side. We do our job here, then we can resolder this connector. It's a multiple step process, but somebody has to do it. Now to safely remove this connector, the fan header, we're going to be applying low melt solder. And I always mention how low melt solder is magic. Because to remove this fan header or fan connector, we need to apply a lot of heat. And by applying a lot of heat, we're going to damage that connector. It's plastic. A little bit of low melt solder goes a long way. And right now we are using NF dot flux, amazing flux. Whatever we are using for this repair, you can purchase directly off our site. Just log in to northwishfix.com, click on shop, add to cart, check out, pay. And we almost always ship out same day. We have everything from this amazing NF.Flux. And you need good flux. Low melt solder, soldering stations, hot air stations. 
whatever you need, one-stop shop. It's recommended to use 430 degrees Celsius or below. You should not be soldering at a higher temperature anyway, unless you really have to. But you should be at 420, 430 maximum. You want to solder, you want to work on, let's say, a vehicle key fob, a Mercedes-Benz key fob. It's a two-layer board. You need like 380. But for most boards, thick boards, you can work at 420, 430. And the flux will work awesome. We are working on another model of the flux that is meant for very high temperatures. I'll let you know when we have it. All right, and we are out. One viewer asked if this flux bubbles. If you are using the flux at the right temperature, it will not bubble, zero bubbling. If you want to use it at a very high temperature, then most likely it's going to bubble like anything else in life. You apply enough stress, enough heat, and it's going to give out. Make sure you are using the flux at 420C, 430C max. Do not go over 430C. Otherwise, you'll be testing the limits of the flux. Just look at how easy it is to clean the flux. Awesome. Now the connector. Let's clean the connector also. Do it once and for all so we do not have to worry about it later. We can just put it in and solder it back on. And look at this amazing wick look at how thick the wick is and how it absorbs solder like i said when you have the right tools things become easy i mean something as simple as the soldering solder from this connector can become a nightmare if you do not have the right wick you do not have the right flux where everything is going to burn on that connector the flux is going to burn the braid wig is not going to suck like it should. Something as simple as this can become a nightmare when you do not have the right tools. Maybe I'll buy, maybe I'll buy cheap tools now and then I can upgrade in the future. No. Save up and buy good tools now because you're going to end up throwing away the cheap stuff that you bought in a very short time. Especially if you want to do this as an ongoing hobby or as a living now if you already have cheap tools and the tools are working for you then keep them only upgrade when you find the limitations of those tools if you already have some but if you are starting out tools has come down in price a lot compared to a few years back so you do not need to really break the bank when buying good tools i've done the research for you all the tools are on our site. Few things are currently out of stock, but we are working on them. Like recently, the hot air station is out of stock. Today, the articulating arm for the microscope is out of stock. We sold a lot of microscopes yesterday and today, along with the articulating arm. A lot of people are still waiting for the end of that sucker, and we are working on it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply hot air back of the board right here in this area and we're going to desolder the connector i'm going to extend the board beyond my bench and that board is going to wobble up and down so i'll put a board holder over it just to hold it in place and we're going to focus on this connector hot air station at max and i'm pointing directly under that connector from bottom of the board the back side of the board Now the board itself is going to get saturated with heat and once the board reaches the melting temperature of solder then we will be able to desolder this connector.
we have to wait until the board absorbs all the heat and it comes to a point where it's very saturated and it reaches the melting temperature of solder. Okay, I do not want to force it, but it looks like it's stuck somehow. Why is it stuck? Okay, good. You see, when a connector is stuck, you do not want to force it, so you do not rip the center pads. You pull and break the center pads, it's game over. Let's clean up, apply our flux. And have that flux. Very nice. And look at how nicely that flux behaves. We're going to apply solder here. And we're going to apply solder right there. Okay. Now, where is our anti-glare light? Right here. And we can see that we tinned every pad on the board. Very nice. We're going to grab a new connector. And the connector is right here. See how we have four legs or four terminals? Those legs will go in here. One, two, three, four. And the pads under the connector, each one of them must solder on to the pads on the board, the ones that we just thinned and applied solder to. If one of them is not making a connection, then it's going to be a problem because most of those pads are data lines. Now we're going to apply heat from bottom of the board. Once solder liquefies, then we can push that connector in. Press and hold, press and hold. Press and hold. Do not let go. A robber or thief comes into your shop. He steals a couple of laptops. It's all right, just let him go. Keep holding. Do not let go unless you want to do this again. Your mother, your wife, your whoever calls, do not answer. Keep holding. Make sure solder hardened, and now you can let go. Go follow that robber and do whatever you want to do. But the thing is, we want to get this job done the first time. Right, so we soldered the connector. Let me just do a quick cleanup. Then we can check the pins, make sure everything is good. And we're going to clean up using the NF, the Northridge Fix brush. Viewers always ask, about the tools, especially new viewers. So I always mention it in my videos. It may get annoying for some where I keep mentioning the products, but you are not the only one watching. We have new viewers every day and we must get the message across. This is a business after all. We're not doing this as a hobby and we're not just doing this for your entertainment. It's a business. And the purpose of the business is to make money. That's number one. If you are not in business to make money, then why have the business? If it's your passion and you just want to do it because you love it and you do not care about the money, then why the business expenses? The overhead, the bills, the licenses, and 101 things. Because sometimes 1% of the viewers will say, oh, it's not all about the money. It is about the money when you are in business. I would hope it's about the money if you are in business. Otherwise, you are a failure. If you have a business and you're not making money, then you failed in business. You failed in business. It may not be that you failed somewhere else in life. 
Maybe you have good manners. You're a good family person. But being in business is to make money. You do it the right way. You make money the legit, the right way. You work hard. You offer your expertise. And that's how you got paid. People appreciate it. And in our case here, not only are we making money with the devices that we fix, but we are also sharing the knowledge. Win-win. People learn while we make money. How amazing is that? And people appreciate it. People are who made this business flourish. Right now, I'm tilting the board at about 90 degrees so we can see the pins because the pins are hidden. All 24 pins are under the connector. We can see some of them and you can tell how the pins are flush with the board, every single one of them. Solid. 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 So I'm able to test six pins from the front. Every single one of them is solid. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, then it's not going to be a fish. So the pins that we are able to test, they are solid. And we're going to check the pins here also, the ones that we can see. And you can tell how the pins are flush. Every single one of them, the ones that I can see, are solid. Amazing. We're going to call the customer and we're going to ask him to bring a compatible device and the Thunderbolt cable. I do not have a device to test this on right now. But the customer is local. He's not too far away. He's actually coming from Los Angeles, about 20, 30 minutes away. We are in Northridge. LA to Northridge is about 20, 25 minutes. Unless there's a lot of traffic. But we are done. Some viewers were asking if our flux burns or browns quick. If you are using a solder wire, and that's a big factor, if you are using a solder wire that has flux core, it has flux built in, depending on what Rosen flux is inside that solder wire, that could be the properties of the flux that's inside the wire itself. Rosen is dark in color. The flux, as you have seen in this video, it does not brown. It takes a lot of heat to char or burn. A lot of heat. As long as you are within 420, 430C or below. And you are using a solder wire that does not have flux core or it has a flux core that's not dark in color. Then, no. It's not going to change color on you. Flux will eventually burn when you use it a lot it will eventually evaporate or give out but anaflux withstands a lot of heat before it gives out okay just cleaning the connector i'll do more cleaning and like i said we're gonna call the customer to come and pick up and we're gonna end the video right here i hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think leave it down in the comments don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video that's the connector that we soldered right there.